So I've got the lovely, the lovely Misha Paris with me today. Sis, it's so good to be speaking to you today. Thank you. It's lovely to speak to you as well. I, I can't believe we've never met. This is crazy. I know. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I'm. the thing is, I always say to people, you know, even if you don't see me, I'm always working. Um, and that's the thing that, you know, I, I, in these times, if you don't have someone walking around with a camera following you everywhere, people assume that you're not doing anything. <laughs> it's crazy how times have changed, right? If you're not posting something on social media, you're right. The assumption is, well, nothing's happening there. Always working, babe. Loving it. I love what I do. Um, and this year it's um, 36 years of doing it. And I'm still like, you know, like excited by it, you know. And what's more exciting is is educating the British public about the origins of gospel music. For me, this is a passion project. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because, you know, I when I I've been doing Radio 2 shows for uh, since 2002 this is when I had my first Radio 2 series and um, it was mostly a soul show and I was always trying to convince them you know I was like guys there's a massive market for gospel music you know you really got to check it out it's really cool I mean I like all music okay straight up but whether I'm writing uh, a street tune or a pop song or I'm a writer you know so I'm an artist so I like everything but this was important to me the gospel thing just to educate UK really because there's a massive um, uh, uh, audience for gospel in the black community mm -hmm. but not so much the UK um, uh, uh, secular uh, audience aren't very you know they know a little bit they probably know oh happy day and that's about it yeah <laughs> so the classic my yeah. job is really yeah you know so my job was really to try and explain to them this is the history of it and I've tried to do that with my documentary the gospel according to Misha I don't know if you saw that that was really powerful and and just the history because um, I love to educate. So uh, doing um, anything in terms of uh, the, the Windrush generation mm. historical period and how we got here for me is a passion project. That's brilliant. So we're going to talk about the Gospel Choir of the Year, which is um, gospel choirs and mainstream TV, which is brilliant. But before that, I want us to just journey back a little bit because you grew up in church. And like myself, young people had no choice but to be on the choir. That was standard. Was that the same for you? Well, no, not really. It was different because I, in my church, I come from New T, you know, which New Testament, and my grandparents were ministers. So we were the first family of the church. So uh, the pressure was really on us to always be really circumspect and just like on point. You know, the shoes was shining, you know, patent leather. You never wore the shoes any other day but the Sunday. The Sunday shoes, you couldn't touch it for the week. The clothes were pressed to perfection. I mean, you know, we were like the first family. So we had right. to always look great. And so uh, my grandparents discovered I could sing when I was probably about, um, I think I was about four, five, and I was singing Rupert the Bear around the house. And uh, they were just like, uh, my grandmother was the one that went nuts and started ringing everyone in the family. Mitchell can sing, you know, she had a good voice. And that was it. And it was just, suddenly I was being told to sing on, on Sundays were visitors day sort of thing in our church. We went to church pretty much seven days a week. You know, we had choir practice, Bible study, all of it. But Sunday we would have guests. So my grandmother and my grandfather wanted me to sort of big up their church and um, you know this was the prodigy I became this little prodigy this little girl with this big voice so then my grandmother was sort of dragging me from church to church and then I I kind of became sort of famous within the New Testament community and and that's a big community by the way it's, it's huge. huge yeah right so I mean I, my I did a I, by the time I got to 11 I was uh, involved in a competition at Wembley which was the convention New Testament convention which is all the bodies of New Testament, they come together at Wembley and have a big convention. And this is where they had the Simon Cowell type <laughs> um, competition of the best singer. And I was the youngest, you know, they were all different ages. Cause you know, in the church, they don't have like, okay. It's a, it was more like BGT, Britain's Got Talent. Right. So it didn't matter, that it was just who had the talent to do a song basically. So I was the youngest and I went up and I did that. And I remember being absolutely terrified because the people looked like ants. There was so <laughs> many people. Imagine you're 11 years old and I go up there, my knees are shaking and I sing, um, um, he's that kind of friend, mm -hmm. which is by Tremaine Hawkins. And that's you know, a I big song, that. big song. That's the stuff I was doing at 11. I'm telling you, I was, you know, I grew up um, when I, when my friends were playing out and I was like, you know, seven, eight, by the time I was seven, I could do every run 
from the what, what, the Hawkins family. I, I used to study the records. I'd come home from school and I'd put the record, you know, the, the, the Jamaican living room, you know what that's like. Right. You know, it's like the shrine, you know? Like, so I used to tiptoe in there and, you know, cause I had to hide. Cause you weren't allowed in there unless you were told to go in there. You know, the, the, everything was pristine and the, the record player was like the golden shrine bit of the mm. room, you know, you just didn't touch that. Uh, because if you broke that, you were finished. There's trouble. So was like trouble. So that little needle, you know, I was just really taking my time and putting it down and looking out from the side to see if anyone was coming in. <laughs> it was like, and I would listen to the runs and I would listen to Tremaine and Lynette Hawkins every single day when my mates are outside playing. By the time I, as I said, I got to 11, I had all those runs down. Mm. I mean, I could sing like them. And then everyone was like, whoa. And then I won the competition at 11 at Wembley. Wow. And that's when the word went out. And everyone was like, you've got to get this little girl. And then Basil Mead now, who is London Community Gospel Choir, yeah. they started hearing about this little girl with the big voice. And then them, I, 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 they were the first choir that I sang with. And I was the lead. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did so not I little, know that. Yeah, yeah. So Basil was like, because Basil was doing competitions every week with the best sort of like the uh, gospel competitions, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, you had people like Levine Hudson. You had people like the uh, the, the, the Wade brothers and mm. people like that. It was a massive scene, you know. I mean, everyone would be getting ready every weekend to go to another gospel concert, whether it was Kojic or um, New Testament. It was a wonderful time for yeah. gospel. Honestly, and that's why we had so many great singers like Eternal and people, Paul Johnson. We had all these great singers come out because everyone was looking forward to the next concert, who was going to be the new thing. It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. It was amazing. And, and you know, and just to show you that it was, it was a very incredible sort of, you know, heritage, even at that time, for me to be brought up in that whole environment was so musical, was so powerful. And um, I, I'm kind of, I think, trying to recreate that by doing this gospel choir of the year. This is like my fourth time doing it. Yeah. Um, it, I've been doing quite, I've been doing this for a long time. I mean, I'm the one that found, uh, not to big up myself, but when it comes to the, um, uh, what's that lovely lady's name now? The one that was sang at Megan's wedding. What's that choir called again? The, Juliet oh Fletcher God. and the um no not Juliet not Juliet no Karen Gibson Karen Gibson sorry yeah, yeah 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 and so I voted her choir through like oh wow got to be seven years ago and I got them through and it was me and and Carrie uh and I was like guys this choir is going to be great and we put them through and they won <laughs> and then she changed the name and then that's the choir that ended up singing for Megan you see yeah and doing some great things as well so you mentioned yeah. like kind of growing up in that era where there was concerts yeah. going on every week and being as young as you were being able to sing in that kind of with that caliber and that amount that's that that in that era how do you feel that impacted your life's journey to where you are today in every way I mean, I, you, you know, you're talking about going to church. I don't remember the first time I went to church. Mm. My grandparents brought me up and I would see my parents at the weekend or sometimes in a weekday, depending if they were up and down and whatever. But my my mom, my, my grandparents were, my, were, were really my parents and I was with them all the time. So I was, you know, um, that was my life. Mm. And, 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 you know, even though I got to that place, by the time I got to like 16, I was so Jesus out. I was like, that's it. I, I, you know, my dad would come and I just lost my father. Bless him. God rest his soul. He died. Oh, condolences. Oh, wow. Yeah, condolences. He was, yeah, he's, amazing. he's an amazing guy. And so my dad would come at the weekend and, and he'd play like Curtis Mayfield and he'd play like Miles Davis and all of that. And I started hearing that music and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I've got to come out of the gospel. This is <laughs> like gospel. I want to make soul music like Marvin Gaye, but my dad's playing all that stuff. So when I got to like 15, 16, I was, well, I was younger than that. I was like 14. I was, I was kind of getting done with it, you know, mm. but you remember I'd been singing in it since I was five, you know? So I was, you know, the teenage thing comes in and you're like, that's it. And I, I, I you know, but it didn't leave me. My point is even right. though I went and did soul music, uh, my voice has always been a gospel voice. It doesn't matter what I sing, you can hear the church in it. Do you have a favorite gospel song? Wow, that's hard. I mean, I do think the two signature songs, He's That Kind of Friend is pretty insane. I mean, that was 
you know, the, the, and and the, um, that's a very very powerful song. Um, and the other song really is "There's a War Going On." That was my signature tune when I was in the church. Uh, wow. The people used to go crazy for that because that song was a Lynette Hawkins song, and I mm. used to. That was like my song. Like when I used to sing that in the shows as a teenager, people used to literally go nuts because it's a, it's such a great lyrical song. If you think about the lyrics talking about, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, uh, you know, against uh, principalities, spiritual yes. wickedness, yeah, and spiritual wickedness in high places. I mean, you know, you know, you're a teenager singing us. I didn't really get any of it, to be honest, <laughs> at that time, but you look, <laughs> you look back and you go, oh my gosh, look what I was singing about, you know, you're like, wow. And that's exactly what it was, you know, I was, I was, it, 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 it's about what I took even into the secular world of singing soul was that thing where you just don't do songs unless they impact the listener. Right. It's got to inspire you. So even when I chose my Breathe Life Into Me, my One Temptation, all the hits that I've had, all the songs were chosen from a place of if they're not spiritually moving me, I'm not singing them. And that's gone into everything that I've done, whether it's a TV show, I will not do it unless it inspires you. You'll never see me on Big Brother on all them stupid shows. You'll never see that because it's got to be, because that's what I'm saying. You're, you're saying, how did it impact everything else? It has yeah. because it gives you an integrity. And, and I have a lot of integrity with that. I will not do things that destroy the spiritual message, which is, you know, there's hope, have faith in the higher power. Even if you don't believe in anything, believe in something, you know, you've got to have something that transcends this. Otherwise, it's a very cold world out there. I, I you know, I'm a, I'm a praying person. So I have prayer meetings in my house. Like, you know, I always have it at Christmas time. Always have everyone come around. Maybe just two or three people and we pray. Mm. And, and it's a beautiful thing. It's, it's impacted my whole life. And even though I was on the run from gospel for a long time, uh, you know, doing, uh, being a pop star, you know, <laughs> um, that, you know, that COVID thing there just shut me down and it just made me yeah. go, you know what, well, I, I need to help the people now. And my grandparents passed and they were always like, oh, hey, you know, we really want you to make a gospel album. And I was like, I can't, I'm a soul singer. <laughs> and um, so <laughs> when I made this gospel album two years ago, um, gospel, um, it, it was it was really to touch the people at a time in, when they were locked down. When they down. needed it the most, yeah. And I just chose all of those songs that have, have helped me through my life put them all together on an album and I made the album literally like I think it was like six weeks wow. got the soul sanctuary choir in that in the studio in Chiswick and we just nailed out that record in two minutes literally it was the quickest oh, album I'd ever yeah. done but only because we were doing mostly covers so it wasn't but it you know it was a very quick album and then it went to number one in the R&B charts which was great Brilliant, and yeah. so super grateful for everyone that purchased that record but my heart and soul was in that because it was the album really for my grandmother and my grandfather. Yeah. It, it was dedicated to them because I, there's no way, Belinda, I could sit, sit here talking to you being, you know, sane had it not been for their upbringing and their values and moral fiber that I got and the spiritual aspect of my upbringing. It, they were fantastic people. I mean, we're talking about these people came from Jamaica with zero you know, built an amazing life, left a legacy, properties and all sorts. They did really well, these guys, you know. And so, you know, I very much um, I'm humbled um, by by the fact that I had this great sort of structure growing up because it, there's no way I could have lasted in this music industry. Trust me, this is a beast of a business, literally. <laughs> right. And and what, what I appreciate about you sharing it is the honesty. I think sometimes you know um when we grow up in 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 church we we shy away from that we don't talk about that so much and i think it's good for other people to hear about the the integrity that you learn the hope that you learn you know knowing that it's not just about oh, us up. there's something yeah. beyond us who gives us strength you know so sharing that yeah. is so so yeah. important it is it's important because as, as i said you know we're in a lawless world all right we're in a world which is not it, it, there's no boundaries everyone anything goes this is where we're at now mm. and that's why it's so scary because we do need structure as human beings as spiritual beings you know this is just the body you know we're spiritual beings and we need those tenets uh that which is the foundation 
of what it is to be a successful human being is only a successful human being when they have a moral moral compass. You've got to have morals. It's the most important thing, the bedrock of any successful family civilization is its moral structure. So important. Amen to that. Listen, we could be here chatting all day and we haven't even touched <laughs> on the on the gospel choir of the year. So let's jump yeah. into that. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> Listen, try and catch this show because let me tell you, I said this is probably my fifth one being a judge. Uh, I mean, every year I'm, I'm just blown away by the talent. My goodness. And it's really nice to see all our African uh, sisters and brothers now coming into the uh, into the frame because, you know, for, for a long time, it was mostly uh, Jamaica led Caribbean. Mm. Um, and, you know, obviously other parts of the Caribbean, but mostly a Caribbean windrush uh, uh, gospel experience you were having in this country. Remember, we're the, we're the ones that started it all. It's yeah. the Caribbean yeah. community that created the gospel scene. So now our African sisters and brothers are now coming into it and doing amazing things. It's, it's a celebration. Honestly, it's fantastic for me to see that, that, um, you know, um, you know, when I was at school and I, I'd go to school with, you know, people who were directly from African countries, they didn't understand all that gospel stuff when I used to talk to them about church. And I was like, you've got to come to church with us. And they didn't understand any of it. Like, no, no, we don't do that. You know, that kind of thing. They were going to Church of England then, you know. And so right. it's so wonderful. Um, remember, I'm way older than you. So it's like, so it's like, for me, seeing this new sort of influx of of the African community coming in to the gospel scene, Mo, Mo, Moiwa and all these, it's amazing, it's brilliant. And this can only be a wonderful thing because it's bringing us together. So this show, um, Gospel Singer of the Year, uh, Gospel Choir of the Year was powerful because there were some amazing African gospel choirs. I, I love when they do their talk, you know, when they do their dances and all that stuff, oh, I yeah. love all that, brilliant. But there was one girl, my gosh, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it away, but there was one voice in the choir that this choir, her voice and the choir. Don't get it twisted; they were sick too. They were amazing. But this girl, my goodness, I had to grab her afterwards, and I just had to tell her, I said, "You are phenomenal." Like she was. So <laughs> Every time you hear some, listen. Well, I get really excited when I see talent. I just go a bit nuts, you know. <laughs> and, uh, Yes, yeah, so try to catch it. It's powerful, this one. It's powerful because it's, just... it's not it's not all Caribbean, you know? It's like a, the African content, uh, uh, you know, they're in there with the Caribbean. Oh, it's beautiful. It's great. Yeah, I was going to say, it's quite a, a varied group of choirs. So there's five choirs, Yeah. right, who, who, who you were judging. They're all very different. They come from all very different walks of life as well. So it's not just, you know, your standard church choirs. There's community choirs involved in there as well, yeah, which is brilliant English to see. Choirs. There's English choirs too. They're not all, um, um, you know, Jamaican uh, uh, or Caribbean. African There's a choir descent. from Ireland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is very. That's why I like it. You see, I like doing this show. I, I like. Look, the, the reason people have always say, "What made you come into the industry?" Not because you know they say, "Yeah, we know you can sing," but why? I said because it was the only thing as a kid that I looked at that didn't have a color. Music just doesn't have a color. It's just anyone can come in. And you know, when musicians see each other, you know, we just jam straight away. We don't even care where we come from. It's just that immediate. And so it's the same thing with this concept of the choir. The choir is such an amazing concept. It's, you know, you have every walk of life who are there because they love it. They literally love fellowship in singing. It's the only way you can put it. And if you think about what, the voice does to the soul. And then you've got this coming to, I always say to people, it's a little bit like when you go to the football match, you know, and you know, you can hear them chant, and they're singing it. And you can feel that there's a, there's a spirit there. Yeah. When they're singing. It's a togetherness, to get... isn't it? Yeah. And the choir is the same. It's the same thing. So it, it, it was powerful. Even hearing all these, different choirs from around the UK. I mean, for me, Belinda, this is massive because when we were young, you would never see a choir from Ireland and a choir from Scotland. That just didn't happen, do you know what I mean? So it's, I mean, it's just a wonderful time. It's a great time. It's brilliant. No, it is. It's really brilliant. And what I love about this as well is that it's going to be on mainstream. So it's Songs of Praise. It's going to be on BBC One. Do you think we need more things like this on mainstream TV? Yeah, but and 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 you know what the thing is 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 in I I mean I was talking to 
um, my friends there at the BBC, I love the BBC because the BBC have always allowed me to create all these shows, even my documentaries. I've done like six documentaries for them now. I mean, I love them. I write them. They they produce, they love working with me and I love working with them. Um, but the thing is, um, I, I just feel that the world is so tumultuous at the moment. Mm. You know, it has been for maybe the last four years. We've gone into this really dark period in our history at the moment. And this is why I believe the inspirational TV shows are going to now become more important uh, because people have never seen this before, this scary world that we're looking at right now. Uh, this is the perfect moment for us to create these shows to give hope to people. And I believe that's why I think they're gonna start wanting more of these things and not to just be an optimist, cause I am always an optimist, but <laughs> I do think that people, I'm just going by the gospel album that I made. I'm like the reaction. I mean, I mean, I have people writing up and saying, I don't even like religion. I don't even like Jesus. This is what they're saying. I don't even like Jesus, but I love that album. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know, <laughs> and this is when you know that you're doing something that is touching people's hearts where they can say, I don't need to have a name for what it is. It just moves me. The message is what is important is that even when it looks dark out there and there's no hope, there's hope in this music. This music will get you out of feeling rubbish and it will make you feel good. That's, you know, it's, it's powerful. The fact that they put me on Christmas day with my gospel show on Christmas day on radio Two. you know, radio Two is 14 million people listen to that, you know, on yeah. a bad day. And the fact that I had prime time with Misha's Gospel Christmas. I mean, come on, there's something going on here. And and I'm so proud that the BBC have seen that this faith shows are doing something. They're, uh, you know, I'm just one of many. Huh? There's lots yeah. of other ones that are coming through as well. But there's, there's something going on, Belinda. I believe people really, they want this. I think there was a cynicism before, you know, but when I was growing up, you know, you know gospel was a dirty word, mm. but now, it's a whole nother thing. People are like, yeah, I oh, I like a choir. <laughs> oh, I love, oh, I don't like that church stuff. I love the choir. You know, that's what you're getting. Yeah. And that is, it, so it doesn't matter how you do it. Remember, we're here to spread inspiration as artists. You know, we're here to inspire and uplift the listener. This is and what to, we're here to do. To spread the good news, which is the gospel, essentially. So Gospel Choir of the Year is going to be broadcasting on BBC One Sunday at 1.15. So that's this coming Sunday and then also on the 29th. Uh, so make sure you are locked in. Misha Parrish is going to be one of the judges. So she's going to be yeah. up on there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful show. And my goodness, very powerful. Um, the, just the talent in this country is, this is what makes me excited is that, you know, we don't have to just keep sitting down waiting for the Americans to show up. You know, we're, we're here to say we have the gifts right here. It's beautiful. What a way to wrap this up. Misha Parrish, thank you so much for your time today. I really Belinda, appreciate bless it. Bless your heart. Thank you so much.